Welcome back to Basic Electronics. In this lecture, we will continue with Thevenin's theorem. We will consider a circuit with a dependent source and learn how its Thevenin equivalent circuit can be obtained. We will then see how the Thevenin form of a circuit can be converted into another equivalent form called the Norton form. We will illustrate how this Thevenin to Norton transformation can be used in circuit analysis. At the end of the lecture, we will look at the maximum power transfer theorem for circuits. Okay, let us get started. Here is another example. It has a dependent source, but no independent current or voltage sources. And uh, let us obtain the Thevenin equivalent for this uh, circuit as seen from AB. What kind of uh, dependent source is this? It's a voltage source, judging from this uh, symbol. And the voltage difference between these two nodes is 2 times I1, where I1 is this current. So this voltage is controlled by a current, and therefore it's a current controlled voltage source. Let us find the Thevenin voltage first, which is the same as VOC as shown here. In this situation, this current I1 is 0 and therefore this voltage drop which is given by 2 times I1 is also 0. So therefore we can replace this uh, CCVS with a short circuit like that. And uh, now we find that VOC is going to be 0 volts and therefore our VTH, the Thevenin voltage is going to be 0 volts. Let us now find the Thevenin resistance and to do that we deactivate the independent sources in the original circuit. In this case of course there are no independent sources so nothing needs to be done. And then we look from AB. In this case because we have this uh, dependent source we cannot really figure out what the equivalent resistance as seen from AB is and therefore let us use another method that is connect a test source and then find the ratio of this voltage and that current that gives us RTH. So we have connected a test current source here. So what we will do is find the ratio Vs divided by Is. In this case Is and I1 happen to be the same. Alright, where do we begin? Let us uh, take one of the nodes as the reference node, say this one. If that is 0 volts, then this voltage is 2 times I1 and I1 is the same as Is, so therefore this voltage is 2 times Is. What about uh, this node voltage? That is the same as Vs. So now we have all the node voltages and we can now write a KCL equation to obtain Vs divided by Is. And that is our KCL equation at node A. We have three currents here, Is, this current and this current. Now Is is entering this node and therefore we will take that as minus Is. This current Vs minus 0 divided by R2 is leaving the node therefore we take that as a positive quantity plus Vs by R2. What about this current? It is Vs minus 2 Is divided by R1. So all these three currents add up to 0 and now we can get Vs divided by Is. So after simplifying this equation we obtain RTH as uh, Vs divided by Is or 8 over 3 ohms. So our Thevenin equivalent circuit has Vth equal to 0 as we saw in the previous uh, slide and RTH equal to 8 by 3 ohms. So that is what it looks like and uh, since Vth is 0 volts we may as well replace that with a short circuit and therefore all we have between A and B is this resistance RTH equal to 8 by 3 ohms. So this circuit is equivalent to this original 
circuit. We have seen so far that a linear circuit can be represented by its Thevenin equivalent circuit consisting of a voltage source VTH in series with a resistance called RTH or Thevenin resistance. Now equivalently we can represent the same circuit with the Norton equivalent circuit shown over here which consists of a current source IN in parallel with a resistance R Norton or RN. For these two circuits to be equivalent to each other we must have some relationship between VTH RTH and IN RN and uh, let us now see what those are. Let us consider the open circuit case. For the Thevenin circuit the open circuit voltage between A and B is simply equal to VTH because this voltage drop is 0. So for the Thevenin circuit VAB is VTH. For the Norton circuit this uh, voltage drop between A and B is IN times RN and uh, that is what this equation says over here. Now for these two circuits to be equivalent we require that this voltage must be the same as this voltage and that gives us the condition that VTH must be equal to IN RN like that. Next let us consider the short circuit case as shown here on the right. What we do here is connect A and B with a wire and look at this short circuit current called ISC and uh, we do that for the Thevenin equivalent circuit as well as for the Norton equivalent circuit. Alright. For the Thevenin circuit ISC is simply VTH divided by RTH this equation here. For the Norton circuit the voltage drop between A and B is 0 and therefore no current flows through RN and therefore IN must flow like that and that gives us ISC equal to IN and because the two circuits are equivalent these two short circuit currents must be equal and that gives us the second relationship between VTH, RTH, IN and RN. Let us now use this first relationship and uh, substitute for IN VTH divided by RTH because these two short circuit currents are equal and then we get VTH equal to IN which is VTH by RTH like that times RN. This VTH cancels out and we get RTH equal to RN. Alright. So what this means is if we know the Thevenin equivalent circuit we can obtain the Norton equivalent circuit using these relationships here. Rn and Rth are equal and In is equal to Vth divided by Rth. So we can go from this circuit to that circuit. Similarly we can go from the Norton circuit to the Thevenin circuit because Rth is equal to Rn and Vth is equal to In times Rn which follows from the equality of these two short circuit currents. Let us consider this problem in which source transformation will be very useful that is transformation from a Thevenin equivalent to the Norton equivalent and vice versa. Okay. So what is the problem here? We want to find the Thevenin equivalent circuit as seen from AB. As uh, step number one what we will do is to convert this Thevenin form consisting of this 32 volts in series with 16 ohms into its Norton equivalent. What is our IN? IN is equal to VTH divided by RTH or 32 divided by 16 that is 2 amperes. What about RN? RN is the same as RTH that is 16 ohms. So with that uh, transformation we get this uh, equivalent circuit here. This is our Norton equivalent circuit 
IN is 2 amperes, RN is 16 ohms and the rest of the circuit, all of this has been left untouched. Alright, now these two current sources, these 2 amperes and this 2 amperes are actually in parallel, they share the same nodes and therefore they can be combined into one single source of 4 amperes as shown over here. So we have 4 amperes in parallel with 16 ohms, this resistance and then we have the rest of the circuit here like that. Next let us convert this Norton form consisting of this 4 amps current source with uh, 16 ohms in parallel into its Thevenin equivalent. What is Vth? It is In times Rn that is 4 times 16 or 64 volts. What about RTH? RTH is the same as Rn that is 16 ohms. So with that uh, transformation we get this circuit here 64 volts in series with 16 ohms and then we have the rest of the circuit that one. Now these two resistances are in series and that gives us 16 plus 20 that is 36 ohms like that. Next we can convert this Thevenin form into its Norton equivalent as given by this circuit here. What is IN? It is 64 divided by 36 that turns out to be 16 by 9 amperes and RN is the same as RTH that is 36 ohms. Now this 36 ohms is in parallel with this 12 ohms and that gives us 9 ohms as shown here and now we can convert this Norton form into its Thevenin equivalent. What is Vth? It is IN times RN so that is 16 by 9 times 9 or 16 volts. What about RTH? That is the same as RN that is 9 ohms. So now we get this circuit here and now these two can be combined to give us 15 ohms. So that is our final Thevenin equivalent circuit as seen from AB. Before leaving this example, let us make a couple of important points. One, notice that our numbers have been rather friendly. As an example, take this 36 ohms in parallel with 12 ohms. Now this is a calculation which we can very easily do on paper without using a calculator. In real life, of course, uh, the numbers may not be as nice. For example, this could be 2.7k, this could be 2.2k and in that case, we will end up using our calculator. Our second point has to do with the method that we used. In our uh, calculation, we used source transformations either from Thevenin to Norton or from Norton to Thevenin to go from this original circuit all the way to its final Thevenin equivalent circuit, this one. But that is not the only way to do that. In fact, there may be other ways. Some of them may even be simpler. For example, if we want RTH, we can get that directly from the original circuit. What do we need to do? We deactivate the independent sources. That means we short this voltage source and open this current source. And uh, when we do that, this 16 ohms comes in series with this uh, 20 ohms. So that gives us 36 ohms. That 36 ohms comes in parallel with 12 ohms and that entire combination comes in series with 6 ohms. So the RTH calculation is fairly straightforward and uh, similarly for VTH we don't need to go all the way using source transformations. We can stop somewhere in between. For example when we come to this stage all we need to do is to find the open circuit voltage between A and B and that is uh, very straightforward. Since there is no current in this 6 ohms resistance, VOC is the same as the voltage drop across this 12 ohm resistance and that can be obtained simply by voltage divisions. That would be 12 ohms divided by 12 plus 36 times 64 and that will give us this answer. Let us now talk about maximum power transfer which is a very useful concept in electronic circuits. 
here is a linear circuit consisting of resistors independent voltage sources and we will consider dc voltage sources here independent dc current sources and dependent sources such as current controlled voltage source current controlled current source etc to this circuit we connect a load resistance rl now this load resistance is going to draw a current and that we will denote with il this load resistance is going to absorb some power and that power is given by pl equal to il squared times rl in other words there is a transfer of power from this circuit to the load resistance and the question that we ask now is for a given circuit or for this given black box what is the value of rl for which pl is maximum to answer that question let us replace the original circuit with its thevenin equivalent and when we do that we get this circuit here so this entire original circuit has been replaced with this thevenin equivalent circuit and now it is uh, straight forward to find il il is simply vth divided by rth plus rl like that and once we know il we can find pl as il squared times rl and that gives us this expression over here to find the value of rl for which pl is maximum all we need to do now is to differentiate pl with respect to rl and put that equal to 0 that is dpl trl should be equal to 0 and when we do that we get this following equation here and notice that this vth squared is a constant which is independent of rl and therefore it does not figure in this equation here all right now when we simplify this further we get rth plus rl equal to 2 rl you should go through this algebra of course and finally we get rl equal to rth so if we have a circuit which is linear we can find its rth and then if we have a load resistance which is equal to that rth then maximum power transfer will take place from the original circuit to rl all right let us look at a plot of pl as a function of rl this is where rl is equal to rth and the function goes through a maximum as an example let us consider this circuit here we have a load resistance between a and b and we want to find its value for which pl the power transfer to rl is maximum so step number 1 is to find the thevenin equivalent circuit for this circuit here and how do we go about doing that let us look at rth first rth can be found by deactivating the independent sources that means we short this 12 volts source here and open this 2 amperes source and then we end up with this circuit over here now rth is simply the resistance as seen from ab and uh, what do we see we see that r1 and r2 are in parallel and that combination is in series with r3 so our rth is r1 parallel r2 plus r3 that is 3 parallel 6 3 parallel 6 plus 2 ohms 2 ohms here and that comes to 4 ohms all right now let us proceed with the calculation of vth what is vth vth is the same as voc that means we remove rl and find the open circuit voltage between a and b so let us do that now so this is our circuit for vth calculation and since there are two independent sources here we can use superposition it turns out to be convenient so case 1 we have the 12 volts source as it is and 2 amps deactivated that means replaced with an open circuit case 
we have the 2 amp source as it is and the 12 volt source deactivated that means shorted. In the first case VAB is the same as the voltage across R2 because the current here is 0 and so there is no voltage drop across R3 and uh, VOC is then given by voltage division that is R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times 12 volts and that turns out to be 8 volts. In the second case we can first find this equivalent resistance and that in fact is the same as uh, the resistance we found here that is 4 ohms and then the open circuit voltage is 2 amperes flowing through 4 ohms that is 2 times 4 or 8, 8 volts like that and the net open circuit voltage the Thevenin voltage that we are looking for is VOC equal to VOC in case 1 plus VOC in case 2 that is 8 plus 8 or 16 volts. So this is our Thevenin equivalent circuit and we can replace the original circuit as seen by RL with this much simpler Thevenin circuit with VTH equal to 16 volts and RTH equal to 4 ohms. Alright. Now we have seen earlier that the power transfer to RL is maximum when RL is equal to RTH that means RL should be 4 ohms. So we choose RL equal to 4 ohms then the power transferred from this original circuit to RL is maximum. It is now a simple matter to calculate this maximum power. Let us find IL first. What is IL? It is VTH divided by RTH plus RL and since RL is equal to RTH, this IL is given by VTH divided by 2 times RTH like that and that turns out to be 2 amperes. Once we know IL, we can find the maximum power as IL squared that is 2 squared times RL that is 4 ohms. So that comes to 16 watts. Let us now look at the simulation results for the example we just uh, discussed and the circuit file is given over here. So you can also try out the simulation and look at the results. Here is our circuit and what we are going to do is plot the power absorbed by RL that is the power transferred by this circuit to RL as a function of RL. We will also plot the current through RL and the voltage across RL as a function of RL. First let us look at IRL that is this current as a function of RL and that is given by this red curve over here. When RL is 0 what is the current through RL? We can look at this circuit and uh, find that out. When RL is 0 the current is 16 volts divided by 4 ohms that is 4 amperes and uh, that is what is seen over here. As RL is increased the resistance in the circuit increases and therefore the current goes down like that. Eventually of course it will reach 0. Next let us look at this voltage across RL denoted by VL over here as a function of RL and that is given by this blue graph here. What is VL? It is RL divided by RL plus RTH times 16 volts. If RL is 0, VL is going to be 0 and that is our starting point here. As RL is increased, VL also increases and eventually if RL becomes very large then this entire voltage is going to appear over here. So this blue graph is going to approach 16 volts as RL tends to infinity. Now the power transfer to RL is given by the product of VRL and IRL. VRL increases as RL increases whereas IRL decreases as RL increases. So clearly the product of these two is going to go through a maximum at some point and that is what is happening over here and that happens at RL equal to 4 ohms and as we have seen in the last slide 
that condition is the same as RL equal to RTH that is 4 ohms and the maximum power is 16 watts and that agrees with the calculation that we looked at in the last slide. To summarize, we have learned how to convert the feminine form into the Norton form and vice versa. We have also seen the maximum power transfer theorem for circuits and we have seen that maximum power is transferred when the load resistance is equal to the feminine resistance. All right, see you next time.